Hello, in this video I want to show how uh, a product fails. In this case I'm going to analyze a gear, as you can see over here. You can see the stress in the gear when it's loaded with a force. And first I'm going to show how I've set this simulation up. And then I'm going to show how you can analyze how this product will fail in real life. So what I've done is I've taken a gear here from the SolidWorks toolbox. You have to have SolidWorks Professional or higher to have the toolbox and the toolbox has to be added in. So here in the DIN library I've downloaded a gear and then you can choose how many teeth you want etc. And if you don't have the toolbox then you can also, can also download this file from GrabCat for example. So I've uploaded this file that I'm going to discuss over here on GrabCat so you see the link over here. And you can download it and test it yourself. So what I've done, I've taken a, a regular material in this case, you can see just plain carbon steel because this gear is very strong. I've put now 5,000, 50,000 newtons, so it's about 5,000 kilograms to get an idea of that. 5,000 kilograms on each of these teeth of this gear, so it's quite a, a big strong gear. So that's why I've taken uh, just plain carbon steel and no higher quality tool steel. So. After that, I've already run the study, uh, and now I'm looking at the Volmese stress, which is the default plot that you see the first. And what you can see is that the stress is the highest over here at the the base of the teeth of the gear. So what I've also done is uh, I've looked on the internet for uh, ways that gears fail most commonly, and you can see here and on a lot of images that the the teeth they actually fail at the base of the gear. So that's what you see in reality. You, you can see a lot more images when you search with Google search for broken gear tooth. You can see a lot more images of completely failed gear teeth like here. So how could we have predicted that the, the gear would have failed in that way? You can't see it from this image, but you can see it when you start looking at the principal stresses. So I'm gonna show how to create a plot like that. I'm going to define a new stress plot with uh, my right mouse button. I've clicked on the stress folder and then I'm going to choose for here the first principal stress. That's the, the biggest tensile stress that there is in the product. I've created some videos on principal stress as well. So maybe if you want to know more about that, you can look at them. And then I'm going to activate here the checkbox show as vector plot like that. And now I already see that the, the biggest tensile stress is here at the base of the teeth and when I want to change the settings of this vector plot I'm gonna create it with a thousand size of the arrows over here and now you see the, the arrows get very big but what you can also see is when you look from the side is that the tensile stress the largest tensile stress is at the base of this gear teeth and then it, the plot is exaggerated 145 times so I can change that here for example I'll exaggerate the uh, deformation not at all I want to see the true scale so what's really happening and then you can hardly see any deformation in the teeth but now I can also see that the largest tensile stress is in this direction and if you look at the more circle, so I've, I've created a couple of videos on that as well. If you look at the more circle, you'll always find that the uh, largest shear stress will happen on an angle of 45 degrees relative to the largest tensile st stress. So for more information, I suggest if you, if you don't know that, look at those videos. But the angle of 45 degrees is running over here relative to this tensile stress. So it's running over here and that will predict that this gear teeth will in fact break like that. They will break by just uh, tearing off over here because the maximum shear stress is running over this, which will mean dislocations can start running over here when you uh, surpass the tensile stress or yield stress of the material. So when I look at back at the Von Mises stress here, I see the red arrow. It's a simple steel I've used over here and a, a very large force. So you can see that the the yield strength, as you can see here with the red arrow, the yield strength is here and it's uh, superseded, it's uh, exceeded in this case. So that's why you know that in, with this force, the gear teeth will liter literally break off at the base 
of the gear of the teeth. So whenever you want to analyze how something breaks and what way it will break, this plot doesn't give you enough information. But when you look at the vector plot of the first principal stress, uh, it will give you a lot of information, not everything yet, but if you want to know more, you can define more stress plots of, for example, the second and third principal stresses to get an idea of how a product will fail. So this is a, a relatively easy product for that. I've just fixed uh, the base of this gear wheel, which would, for example, be the case when uh, a gear would be shrink fit on an axis. Uh, it could also be possible to analyze other situations with gear wheels but in this case on internet I found that most gears break here on this side of the teeth so I'm not gonna go look at the stress situation over here uh, relative to the axis because that's uh, in this case not uh, a thing that should be investigated so that's uh, that's what I wanted to show to analyze with FAM how a product will break and this is a very simple product for it and very simple restraints uh, and I've got another video on a spanner that goes a little further that has a, a more of an idea of when restraints are becoming very important so when it's getting very important to look at the restraints for an analysis so that's it for this video thanks for watching